In this video, I am going to demonstrate the use of the force model to solve problems involving objects and forces and accelerations uh, on them. So in this example, I have an object uh, on, on the ground, and I'll call it mass M. And it's going to have two forces pushing and pulling on it. So one force is going to be pushing it forward, or pulling it forward. I'll call that F1, and that's going to be 30 newtons of force. And there's going to be a second force pulling back on it. F2, which is 20 newtons of force. The mass of the object is going to be 5 kilograms. And the question is, what is the acceleration of the object? So we're going to use Newton's second law here to determine the acceleration of the object. <coughs> so first step, draw a free body diagram. So we're going to draw a picture of the object away from its environment or free from its environment. So we're not going to draw the ground, just draw the object in question. So one force, as we've seen, is mg, the gravitational force, or its weight. Uh, the normal force, which is the force of the ground holding it up. And these two forces here, F1 and F2. Notice I'm using all variables. I'm not using numbers yet. We will in the solve part. Okay. So <clears throat> once we have drawn the free body diagram, we have our template. Uh, some of the forces, I'll say the x direction positive is to the right. And I'll say up is positive. So in this diagram, I have two forces that point in the x direction, F1 and F2. Since F1 points in the positive direction, that's going to be a positive F1. And F2 is going to be negative. And in this case, <coughs> there's going to be an acceleration, so it's not zero. There will be acceleration, so this is not zero. Uh, sometimes you don't know if the acceleration is going to be zero or not, so in which case you'd still put an X. And if you do solve for acceleration you get zero, then you know it is zero. But if you uh, know the acceleration is in fact a zero, like in this case down here, in the Y direction, Fn minus Mg, Fn points up positive, Mg points down negative. If there's no acceleration in this direction because we're sliding purely along the X axis, this is going to be zero. So basically, these two boxes are going to be zero if you indeed know the acceleration is going to be zero. If it's not, or maybe even unsure, you put an X. Okay? So this is step two. We write the force equations. Again, this is the organization part. The physics is right here, identifying what forces act on the object. Now that we have the force equations written, we actually have the equation for the acceleration right here. So this is this little part right there is what we're going to use to solve for the acceleration. So if I go up here to the solve part up top, I have F1 minus F2 equals MA in the X direction. Therefore, the acceleration in the X direction is equal to F1 minus F2 all over mass. Now we plug in the numbers. So I'm going to have 30 minus the 20 for the other force over 5 which math-wise is 10 over 5, or 2 meters per second squared, is my final answer. Box your final answer. <clears throat> so, um, in the problem, we had two forces acting on this object of a known mass. Uh, we wanted to find the acceleration rate. So step one, again, we draw the free body diagram. We draw all the forces acting on the object. Number two, which is the organization, we I have a one-to-one -one correspondence here for all the forces. There are two in the x direction and two in the y direction. I write those in here with the correct plus and minus signs and so forth here. Uh, here we put zero because we know indeed that there's no acceleration up and down. This is sliding purely in the x direction, so that's definitely zero. In the x direction, and you probably guess it's going to accelerate because it's 30 and 20, but in some cases you don't know. If you don't know or you definitely know it is accelerating, you cross it out. It's not zero. Third step was we built a custom equation. So this is going to be a little bit different depending on what's in the boxes here. So we write that down and solve for A, which is basically divided by M, and plug in the numbers, we get 2 meters per second squared. Just to see the effect of mass, imagine this mass were larger and larger and larger. 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 kilograms. What would that do to the answer? If this number in the denominator went up, this 5 were larger, the overall acceleration would go down meaning that 
a larger mass has more inertia and the forces acting on it aren't going to give it as great an acceleration as a small object. On the conversely, if this mass is really, really small, and this mass is really, really tiny, this 10 newtons of force would cause the thing to acceler accelerate very quickly. So there you have the, the effect of mass on the, uh, the force. Um, so here's an example of how to solve a force problem of new, uh, using Newton's second law of motion.